Psalms chapter 74. Mashio, which you can find a reference to instruction of Asaph. It was a prophet. Instruction. Oh, I'm going to give you some kind of illustration. Aid of knowledge. O oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? All right, Lamentations 5, 20 through 22. There's a type of this. Is when there, you're not in fellowship with God. There's trouble. There's problems. Why has that? Because of sin. Because of rebellion against God. God don't just pour out his wrath upon you like Roman and Greek gods would have you to think. You have to be in rebellion. You have to be in sin and in wickedness for God to do anything. Listen, the, God, the Bible says to us Christians that God's a father and he chastises us when, when we do wrong. God's not a, a father that whips us just because he feels like it. That would be abusive. That would be an abuse of God. And that's not what God is. Why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Now you run that sheep to John chapter 10. That's Israel. And so many times we reference ourselves as sheep. Well, yeah, it says other sheep I have. Which is the same. The primary sheep are a reference to the children of Israel. Very less is it likened to a Christian. But it can be used as illustration. Remember thy congregation, the whole nation of Israel. Which thou hast purchased of old. Redeemed. Redeemed by the Passover lamb, by the firstborn of Egypt that were that were slain of God. All that blood that, that was shed that night, and the night before with the, with the Passover lamb, there was a lot of blood slain as they put that blood upon the doorposts and on the sides of the mantles. The rod of thy inheritance. Which thou hast redeemed. Rod is, is used for correction. It's used for a symbol of, of rulership. God brought that rod. He paid for it. Aaron's rod that was dead budded. Almonds and flowers. This Mount Zion. Where thou hast dwelt. Past well, God left. It's not there. And this is a prophet. He's speaking of what is going to happen later. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolation. After another, after another, after another. There's a, I believe it's Leviticus or Deuteronomy. There's a, a terrible, as in, as in frightful chapter that says a whole bunch of, of, of condemnation. And I'll get you seven times more for your sins. And it goes on for another list. And it goes on for a few verses. And it says, I'll get you seven more times for your sins. And I'll go after you seven more times. Condemnation and terrors and troubles of wickedness that Israel and Judah had done as two as one. And Israel went into captivity. Judah went in captivity. And then the, the two and a half tribes on the wrong side of, of the promised land went into captivity. For doing wrong. For wickedness. And that of Israel and that of Judah we read in First and Second uh, Kings. And first and second chronicles is recorded of their sins. And all even all that the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. The enemy in the sanctuary 
What about the kings that were that were taking the gold off the doors and using it as payment for missionary uh, mercenaries? How about there was a a king that that was in a in a foreign land? He sees an a, an altar. He tells the priest to go over there, get the dimensions, and build that altar. And the priest does. He builds it, and he puts it in the house of the Lord. He said he also took the basins that the that the uh, uh, labor was on, broke it, and put the labor on the pavement. All the times that the doors were shut, that the place needed cleaning, had to take all the defilement out of it, Read about that. And finally, it just came to the point, it just got so wicked, it was without remedy, that God told Jeremiah, I don't even want you to pray for them no more. Shut up! And the wrath of God came. And the city was destroyed, as it was in 70 A.D. You know what they did wickedly in the sanctuary? Before 70 A.D., they thought to kill Jesus, the Son of God. Peter, James, and John would preach at the temple, and they brought him to jail. And then they whipped him. Thy enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. You know the enemies are roaring in the midst of the of I spoke, can't even say it, Christian nation that we were? How did the enemies roar in a nation that was a Christian nation? Because your constitution gave them the rights to do it. You allowed every religion freedom to do what they do. And with the same thing, with the same amendments, with the same work, you push God out of the country. Using the Constitution, which does not mention God, which does not mention Jesus Christ. What do you do with Thomas Jefferson, who took the King James Bible and chopped it into pieces to make his own Bible? Explain that one to me. I read George Washington's diaries. There's seven or at least seven, eight or ten volumes of them. Very rarely did he write in his book he went to church. But he will tell you in his book how much cotton he sold, how much of this work he did. He tell you about this servant. He tell you about this animal. He tell you about this visitor. From when it came to Sundays, hush, quiet, nothing mentioned. Very rarely. If our founding fathers were Christians like you make them out to be, why was this constitution rejected of Jesus Christ and rejected of the name of God? And you allowed the enemies to be here. You know what the fruits of America are with the constitution? Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Seven-Day Adventists. They're allowed. They set up their incense, signs, flags, banners for signs. So every state in the Union has their own flag. No, I'm not against America. I was born American. I stand in American. I preach on the street in America to tell people about their sins. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't like it, that's tough. You've got a prejudice. you got a prejudice against God over what you like a piece of paper that, that has no bounding in this country no more. Stand on the Bible. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon thick trees. 
but now they break down the card work thereof at once with axes and hammers. Card works, images, idols. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. Destroyed. Fire destroyed. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. 70 A.D. Titus did a great job of destroying that. There's only one section of that wall that you there that they have called the Wailing Wall today. My Bible records that, that temple's coming back again. And Jesus Christ, not Ronald Reagan and Republican Party, is going to sit as ruler in Jerusalem. You can have your Democrats. You can have your Republicans. You can have your Green Party. You can have your politics of America. I'm waiting for Jesus Christ. I've had it with man rulers. I want justice. I want people that reject my God, my Savior. I want them to be judged. I want a land where Jesus Christ is the ruler and all righteousness is settled in. No cults and no religions. What is right will be right. And the Bible says in the millennium, you won't need witnesses. You won't need to tell people about Jesus because they're already going to know. They said in their hearts, this is the wicked, the enemies. You know what? You know what these religions would love to do in America? They would love to burn our churches down. But oh, if we were to go something to their churches, they, you know, if we were to do something to them, oh, Constitution, Constitution! The Catholics would love to destroy us. Look at their history. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. Read what's going on in the world in Africa where Islam is prominent, where churches are being burned. In Korea, Christians who are trying to get the word out are being killed. They're being tortured. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. Let's get rid of God's people. United Nations. The Arabians, the Middle Easterns, want to get rid of God's people. You better watch out. Genesis 12 says, I will curse them that curse thee. Your conduct, your, your, your actions about what you do to the Jew will be returned to you. You bless them, God will bless you. You know, Babylon was used by God to inflict punishment upon Jerusalem. Where is Babylon today? And God told Babylon to go do it. Where are they today? You know, Rome inflicted punishment upon the Jews. He said, well, Rome is still around. Wait till after the millennium. Where will Rome be? Where will Rome be at the end of the tribulation period? Mystery of Babylon. You know, it, to show the proof of God that, that those little people called Jews, I mean, little as a little tiny nation, no bigger than Rhode Island, if they're not protected, if they're not God's people, the fact is they're still around. They have not been eliminated. If Adolf Hitler would have had his, his great commission to do what he wanted to do without God hindering him.
Babylon went into Jerusalem to destroy it, yet they brought out Daniel, Meshach, and Indigo. More out Hebrew children. Why? So there's still be a seed. When Jeremiah was approached, he said, listen, you can stay here. You can go back to Babylon, and I'll leave you people here in, in, in the land to take care of it. If the world had their chance, they had their way, they would destroy the Jew. Satan has been trying to destroy that Jew since God picked out Abraham. He tried to make Aaron, uh, he tried to make Aram, Abraham, he tried to make him uh, unable to produce children. And when it was that, he tried to make him to produce the wrong child, Ishmael. And then he finally got a son through Sarah, and Isaac and Rebekah had a problem with children. They had burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. Now that word synagogue does not show up until after Babylon. They picked that up in, in, the, in the land of Babylon. There were no synagogues before Babylon. Listen, persecution, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. This persecution is because they've done wrong. There's a difference between suffer persecution and suffering punishment. Persecution is because the world hates you. Punishment is because you've sinned against God. Oh, I'm being persecuted. I'm being persecuted. You better look. Maybe because you're being, maybe you're being chastised instead of being persecuted. You better find out which is which. We see not our signs. Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1. It says, For the Jews require a sign, and the, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. There is no more any prophet. Prophets were sent to the nation of Israel. Neither is there, and neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. No prophets, no, no prophecies. No one will say, how long is this going to happen? You know, at least God told Abraham, and it was known how long the children of Israel would be in Egypt. God told Abraham, your seed is going to be in a land for X amount of time. I think it's 490 years, but I'm not sure on that date. Or, or time span, but it was told, and then when they finally got out of Egypt, it said this amount of time, this many years, just like God said. Oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Revelation sixteen nine. Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? So what, what name do they curse when they curse in the world? Why do they always use Jesus Christ as a curse name? Why do they always say, God damn it? Why do they ever Buddha damn it? Or Allah damn it? Or Mary damn it? Because those names had no value. Those names have no authority. The name of God, the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah, is a curse when a guy drops the wrench down into the car engine or scrapes his fingers against the wall. Listen, I, I work in a grocery store. I can hear the people say the name of my Lord and Savior in vain. I know they're not calling out for, for service.
Why withdrawest thou thy, band, thy hand, even thy right hand, because of sin and rebellion? The right hand is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where Jesus is seated. Don't expect God to come and help you out and take care of you if you are living in rebellion and sin against him. That's against his holiness. Pluck it out of thy bosom. It's like God taking his hand and just putting it inside his shirt. That hand can't see nothing because it's in his, in his, it's in his clothing. For God is my king, capital K, of old. God is king of Israel right now, even though he's not reigning in Israel. He's their king. Even Pilate said, king of kings. King of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And they say, well, don't write that. Say he said, no, I have written what I have written. Pilate was assured that that man that he crucified was the king of the Jews. It is recorded in all four Gospels. Imagine a heathen Roman man uh, at the beginning of the Roman Catholic Church system telling the Jews that that is your king. And then turning to him and saying, His blood be upon us and our children. That was a mouthful. Because those words were back there in the law. When God told that Jew, you're going to have the law, and they said, everything you say, Lord, we will do, you moron. You can't do all the law. Only Jesus could do the law. You should have sought mercy and grace. And then what did Moses do? He wrote it all down in a book. And he took the blood, he sprinkled the blood, and he sprinkled the nation. And they turned around and said, let, the, let his blood, let God's blood be upon us. Really? The holy sinless blood of Jesus Christ be upon you after what you've done to him? Where's your temple now? Why do you have a piece of broken bone on your plate in Passover? Why is it when one of your family members or your friend who's a Jew receives Christ as their Savior, you have a mock funeral for him? And then you turn around and expect God to bless you right now? You, you ain't in it yet, Mr. Jew, Mrs. Jew. You're going to have seven years of tribulation. That, that suffering servant of Isaiah 53 is not you. It is God. It is Jesus Christ, your Messiah. You rejected him. You're going to get seven years of Satan, the enemy. And you're going to cry out, how long, how long? And the Bible records how long. But since you rejected the word, you ain't going to know nothing. You need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, my friend, Jew or Gentile. And God is not done with you. You are his people. He ain't going to give you up. As his people, as his child, you are being bad. You are being rebellious. He has to chastise you. And that's what this chapter is about. Paul told the Jew in Acts that the name of God's being blasphemed, maybe not Acts, but I think maybe Romans, that the name of God's being blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, the Jews. Paul said that to his people. Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Pluck it out of thy bosom, for God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You know, even in all that, Meshach, Indigo, da Daniel, 
Jeremiah, we're all saved. We're all protected by God, even in his wrath. There are Jews that are being saved today. Praise God. There are Jews that have been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Thou hast divided the sea with, of the, by thy strength, the Red Sea. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Isaiah 51 9. That Leviathan of Job 40 or 41. There ain't no crocodile over there, you moron, you stupid idiot. You blasphemy idiot, don't you know what the word of God means? You can't even tell the, the difference between Leviathan and alligator. One starts with an L, one starts with an A, you elephant, tortoise, uh, jerk. Whatever you want to call it, I've seen the elephant. You don't know nothing. That is Satan. Revelation 12. Heads. How many heads does that, does, does that dragon have? Ten. But you don't know that because you want to change the word of God. Because you're so great and powerful with your PhD. PhD, please hurry, damnation. You think you're so smart, you think you know what God said. You don't. We are going into the tribulation period. We are at a point in Revelation 12 where God's going to feed that Jew in the wilderness. He's going to feed him with the head of the, of the Satan. They're going to have like the manner they had in the wilderness of old. What? Well, you think I'm full of it? In the waters. It's above your head. Those old maps were wrong. They had the, the, the Leviathan swimming through the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean. No. Read Genesis 1. The waters are above your head. Where they send astronauts in space ships, a launch window, use charts. Satan's above your head. Between God's throne and this earth. Now watches, watches. Thou breakest the head of Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. And man did eat angels' food. Now I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's gonna, how it's going to happen. Let me just tell you what's going to happen. God is going to break Satan. He's going to wound his head. Antichrist. And through that process, when those Jews run down to Salem Petra or wherever they go in Revelation 12, Satan is going to feed the Jews somehow by God breaking his head. Yea, though thy rod and staff, they comfort me. That rod and staff is Satan. Read Psalms 23. In light of the Jews in the wilderness where God has prepared a place for them. That rod and staff is an instrument of the shepherd. It is Satan. God used the rod of Satan to go after Job. I know there's a lot to handle. But well, there's some of you out there who, who are into this strong meat. You know, you got to get out of diabetic preaching messages. Always sweet and honey and flowers. You gotta have a pastor who has a backbone and is wearing a loincloth and eating locusts and prepared. Prevent!
that raises his voice and gets angry. Oh, everybody just open your Bibles to Flowery Chapter 37 as we go with today's calendar message. <laughs> you need a man to preach. You got a wuss, a wimp. I don't care you don't like it. They didn't like God's prophets either. Wilderness. The people are going to go into the wilderness again. Revelation 12. Thou didst cleave the fountain and the flood. Thou driest up mighty rivers. The Jordan River. As Joshua crosses it. We're straight up. You know, Satan is going to, Revelation 12 is going to swallow the Jordan, thinking to destroy Israel with a flood as the earth opens up her mouth and takes on the water. The day is thine. The night is also thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun, Genesis 1. Time is the Lord. It's Miller time. No, it's God's time. My day off. No, it's God's day off. God has allowed you to have a day off. Give it to him. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Time is God's. He just allows you to do things. Thou hast set up thou hast set all the borders of the earth. So every geographical boundary is because of God. America has 50 states because America because God doesn't want America to have 51. You say God is involved. Yes, God's involved. You know some of those states are, are broken by the Mississippi River. Some of the states are broken by the ocean. A lot of boundaries of the, of the U.S. states are, are geographical elements of mountains or rivers or what have you designed by God. You know, the Bible says that there are 12 nations, of, of 12 tribes of Israel, and that there are 12 main world Nations, dominant areas, countries, continents, I mean. How does it match? There are 12 zodiac signs of the, of the stars. There are 12 tribes of Israel. There are 12 months, and there are 12 tribes of Israel. Everything's based upon those Jews. Everything is based upon the twelve. Thou hast made summer and winter. It's too hot. It's too cold. Those are the two seasons that are complained about. Fall and spring are usually not complained about. But those are the two types of season that God has made that we, me, 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 complain about. And we complain about something that God made. Interesting. Remember this, that the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. 
He's calling me, hey, Lord, you know, you see what they're doing to you? Don't forget it. God ain't going to forget it. He's writing it down. It's going to be recorded in Revelation 20 when the books are open. I wonder if an atheist uses Jesus Christ's name as a, as a cuss word. You ever think about that? I don't know. Do they? Can you imagine an atheist standing behind there and the books are open? All right, use, use Jesus Christ 4,338 times. Now, I thought you didn't believe in Jesus. As God names off those 438 or 4,386 times that you used his name in vain. Violated the commandment. Thou shalt not use it. Take the Lord's name in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. See, people don't realize God's writing it all down. You don't need to tell God, God, remember, have him remember. God already remembers. He's got it written down. God never forgets unless it's under the blood. That's the only way God can forget. Is there anything God can't, can't do? He can't do nothing. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He cannot remember my sins that are under the blood of Jesus. My God cannot lie. My God can never break his promise. There's plenty of things God can't do. God cannot sin. And if it's not under the blood of Jesus Christ, he will remember. Oh, deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. Turtle dove was one of the offerings you, you can bring. Forget not the congregation of thy poor forever. We dealt about the poor the other night. And you know it's not the poor that usually are, are the troublemakers. Usually those are rich. But there are poor people who are sinners. And who reject God too. People who reject God and rebel against God are all sexes, all ages, all creeds of men, and all financial. Either you, you, you owe, you have a negative amount of finance, or to you have a full amount of finance. Whatever it is, you, you're rebellious. Listen, you don't have to have money to reject God, and you can have plenty of money to reject God. Have respect unto the covenant. The covenant God made with him. The covenant that he made with Abraham, with Isaac, in, Gen in Genesis 17, 7 and 8, in Leviticus 26, 44 and 45. For the dark places of the earth are full of the inhabitants or inhabitants of cruelty. Oh, yes, there are. You know, somewhere right now, a wife is being beaten by her drunken husband. Somewhere right now, there are children who are suffering, who are malnutritious, who are not getting food while their parents are smoking and drinking and into drugs. Somewhere right now in this world, there's a Christian being tortured for the word. Somewhere right now, somebody is getting tortured for whatever reason. Somewhere in the world right now, they're thinking about a bigger and better bomb. A bigger and better, crueler weapon. Cruelty throughout the whole world is a result of sin. Oh, let not the oppressed return to shame. Let them not be happy. Let them not rejoice. Let them not be in victory. They won't. Revelation 20. But we dealt about this in Psalm 73. We look at the wicked and oh, look how wonderful they are. Look how great they are. Yeah, on the earth. And they may get to victory here on the earth. 
but not at the great white throne judgment, my friend. Remember how the foolish man reproaches thee daily. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You're not getting away with what you're doing. Your religion is being recorded by God. Your vile wickedness is being recorded by God. And it will stand in account. The only way it can be washed is to be washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ by you repenting. Daily. There are men out there who are reproaching God every day. It is a daily event. Forget not the voice of thy enemies. The tumult of those that rise up against thee increase continually. You know what? Evolution is a lie. You know, you, you think things are bad today? You think things are a muck today? <coughs> you wait till Satan has ruined this world for seven years. You think you got problems now. You wait till, till Jesus said that there is a time coming that has never, ever been such a time. No, not even the days of Noah and not even the days of Lot. A time when Satan will be a ruler of this world for seven years. The vials, the trumpets, and the seals, and the three woes that God will be pronouncing judgment upon this world and the rebellion of the people as they blaspheme God more and more. It is called the time of Jacob's trouble. The three and a half latter years of that seven years will be worse than the first three and a half years. And every day of those seven years will be blasphemy, will be rejection of God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That at the end of that time, all lights go out. The sun is turned off. The moon is turned as into blood. And all is dark. As Jesus mounts up and prepares to return as a lion in anger with a sword coming out of his mouth with a rod in his hand to beat. The rebellion and the rejection of men. Don't you worry. God will remember the wickedness. God will get justice. God will be king of this planet. Even if he has to get rid of all the wicked. Including wrapping up and chaining up Satan for a thousand years. There is coming a day when wicked will be all gone. They will be cast into the lake of fire. They will not be in our presence any longer. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. 
How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I think that God His Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art.